Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. I teach piano here. And in this short lesson, I'm going to talk about a very simple and powerful groove which you can use on the piano to play a lot of the, the, the rock songs out there. Stuff from Green Day and uh, you know Nirvana and Radiohead and uh, Imagine Dragons, these sort of bands. Um, and I've, a lot of these bands don't naturally have the keyboard or even the piano or any form of the keyboard in the band. It's pretty much guitar driven music. But um, a, a, a good way to, to, to approach the instrument or one good way to approach the piano is to learn from other musicians or to learn from other instrumentalists. You could learn from a banjo player, you could learn from a harp player, you can learn from a drummer. Uh, I learn a lot from drummers all the time or uh, bass players, guitar players, horn players, singers, right? So a lot about the piano is, is not just about learning from other pianists. It's about learning from other musicians who play other instruments. It could even be electronic music or anything you listen to. Right. So the technique you just heard in the introduction, uh, in, in the introduction part, which was nothing but. So what you'll observe in the performance is some of the hits are very loud and the and a lot of the hits are, are soft. So it's very much like a drummer on a snare drum. Uh, hitting the snare drum exactly where they want to with full pelt and then also hitting it softer. That's what they call as ghost notes or bass guitar players call them mute notes or muted notes. Now on a piano you can't really mute anything but by playing things slightly softer and louder you give the effect of a drum or a bass player in the band. So the rhythm structure on the piano is very percussive I'll just try to demonstrate it on the keyboard first on the surface and then show you on the piano. So it's essentially this. Right? So that's going to be looped throughout. So that's left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay? Perhaps you, you'd like to do it with me once. Left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Again. Left, left, right. Little faster, left, left, right, with the pulse, and you can perhaps stop or you can continue. So anything you play in the left hand is going to definitely be bass heavy and kick drum heavy. You could think like a drummer playing a kick and anything in the right hand could be snare drum or uh, the octave of a bass guitar player in, in a band, right? So the chords I've chosen are the, I guess, pretty much the same chords used for Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day and... Uh, I think the entire song, um, what is this, Radioactive by, by Imagine Dragons. So that's nothing but C minor, E flat major, B flat major and F major. So the scale I'm on is essentially B flat major. Um, I'm not too sure what the original song is on, but uh, once you figure it out, you could transpose it and play at a key of your uh, interest. So the chords I'm using now are the 2 minor, 2 minor, the 4 major, the 1 major, and the 5 major. So 2, the 4 which is E flat. Then B flat, the root chord, back to F, it's fifth, right? So if you see, it goes well with the song. And so on, or that other one. But the rhythm 
I played on the piano was a very kind of ballad rhythm, which you may not um, use that often in a rock band. So uh, with, with the whole ensemble, this is the rhythm which I showed you on the table. That groove you can bring here. So I would suggest first of all, just do it with root notes of the chord in the left hand and the chord in the right hand. So you're going... One bar you need to develop two chords. At least that's how these two songs go. C minor, E flat major. Repeat. You could perhaps look at that in one piece. Practice that and then get to the song speed. next two chords the same way B flat and F right B flat F and then the whole all four together same rhythm and you could add an element of swing Taka 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 taka. That sort of a feel. And try to stress on where you think the drummer is really going to stress on the snare drum. So. be that loud but you get the idea uh, you're trying to copy the the impact of the drummer while you play and that's what will allow you to work really well with the group and also with your chords try to articulate them such that some chords are a bit longer in duration and some chords could be shorter in duration so usually when I'm playing the ones which are shorter, those are usually not the actual snare drum hits. Those will be more the ghost notes played by the drummer. So, see that was soft. speed right and uh, another tip you could apply to your left hand just so that you don't make the bass too intrusive in the song is when you're playing the bass note C you can hit it with an octave The second hits which are not the second the third and the other hits which are not on the beat one of the bar you don't have to re-hit the pinky finger you can leave the pinky held and focus on the thumb which is anyways playing the root of the chord that is the octave right so you go if you see my little finger is still sustaining for I would imagine the entire bar or at least still E flat comes in or the new chord so what I am doing is I am grooving from the beat 1 onwards I am grooving only with the thumb of the left hand and my entire right hand so I have sort of let this little finger hold the root note now this depends on the song if you want your song to be a lot more epic uh, definitely I would suggest holding the piano especially if you are a keyboard player who uses all these orchestral patches this could be the bass sound and that could ring but at the same time you don't want to annoy the bass player in the band if they feel that you're overdoing it in that register you may want to lift your hand completely so uh, this is with the pinky sustained even with the E flat
show you again slower and you once you get the hang of it you can mess around with the rhythm pattern you can you can make shorter phrases like you can just fool around and, and and make something different of your own something like that i quite like that one um so a good way to also develop some inspiration is to just jam with uh, drummers and bass players because they'll give you all of these ideas this is what they do pretty much every minute of the day while they are jamming together they are trying to make these grooves which make dif- which make people move in different ways so the one of the best ways to learn is definitely by jamming with a bass player or a drummer uh, who you are friends with or who who you are part of a band with right so in the next lesson what i'm going to do is add some arpeggio variations to this same exercise to make it a little bit more interesting on the piano so practice this one and i'll see you in the next video come back for part 2